Yeah. Anyway, we're going to get into word this morning, hopefully. Uh, so why don't you turn to Galatians uh, chapter 4. Um, it's in the New Testament. If you didn't know. If you've never heard of the New Testament, it's in the Bible. If you, if you haven't got a Bible, just find a Christian nearby and they'll show you what it's all about. But we're going to go to Galatians chapter 4 this morning. Reading uh, the words of Paul, Paul the Apostle, to the church in Galatia. And it says, uh, he says this. Have you found it? I've never given you half time. Galatians chapter 4. I'll read, to, read it to you anyway. He says, think of it this way. If a father dies and leaves an inheritance for his young children, those children are not much better off than slaves until they grow up, even though they actually own everything their father had. They have to obey their guardians until they reach whatever age their father sets. And that's the way it was with you before Christ came. We were like children. We were slaves to the basic spiritual principles of this world. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law. So that we could, uh, so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Now you are no longer slaves, but children are God's own children. And since you are his children, God has made you his heir. Hallelujah. Amen. Before you Gentiles knew God, you were slaves to these so-called gods that don't even exist. So now that you know God, or should I say, now say that God knows you, and I love that. How amazing is that? That now God knows you. Hmm. Hallelujah. Why do you want to go back again and become slaves once more to the weak and useless spiritual principles of this world? You are trying to earn favor. Uh, you are trying to earn favor with God by observing certain days or months or seasons of the year. I fear for you. Perhaps all my hard work with you was for nothing, dear brothers and sisters. Dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to live as I do in freedom from these things. For I have become like you Gentiles, free. From those laws. Let me pray for us this morning. Loving God, we thank you for your word. And Lord, we again come to this time and this space where we gather around it to be influenced, Lord God, to be spoken to by it, Father, to shape our lives, because that is our desire this morning, Lord God. As we have gathered in this house, as we have gathered in this space, Lord God, our hearts are turned towards you because we want to glean from you and to become more like your son, Jesus. And so this morning, Lord God, we commit ourselves afresh to that purpose, Lord, that we would become like him. In your wonderful name, we pray all these things. Amen. Uh, we've been sharing for the last few months or so on faith. Um, and I, uh, we had a, a great word from uh, uh, Barry last Sunday. Barry's not here. He must be getting ready for the second service. But um, it was, a, it was a, a great time together. And in the second service, I got to share as well. And, and uh, I shared a bit about uh, how sometimes in faith, we can come to a place where, um, I guess if I was to shrink it down into one line, basically, we, can always, we often come to, in faith to God when we want something. We come with faith to receive. But how often do we go to God with faith to give? And that was kind of the upshot of it. And I won't go into all that today. But that was kind of where I went last week and what I shared with the second service. And I'm not going to do that with you this morning. Why? Because today is Advent. Today is the beginning of a season in the church where we gather around a remembering process. And we go on a journey for ourselves. So church, welcome to Advent. Hallelujah. The word Advent comes from the Latin Adventus. Which means coming. It means coming. We are in a season of coming. God is coming. Christ is coming. And there is an anticipation that comes into our lives during the season. For the next three weeks as believers, we are called to a season of, an of anticipation. Are we anticipating something, church? Or are we winding down? Are we relaxing? Are we not anticipating? 
Are we heading into the season with a, oh, I'm finally glad this year's over? Because we are called as a church to a season of anticipation. Because something is coming. It is Advent. It is a time of coming. It is a time of something new and a new beginning. Hallelujah. Today on the first Sunday of Advent, we light the first Advent candle. And we've shared about this for many years in this church. So if you're not sure about the Advent candles, I, I want to encourage you. Pastor Eliafi did a message way back in 2002. And it's available if you want to get your hands on it. You can listen to it. And it'll tell you all about what all the Christmas symbols mean. Like the tree, the wreath, even Santa Claus will freak you out. It's amazing. So um, if you want to get a hold of that, please see the office and we'll arrange it. Gene's not prepared for that, but that's okay. I'll sort, I'll sort it out during the week. But yeah, if you want to get your hands on it, do it. But we light the first candle. And the first candle speaks to us of the prophecies of the Old Testament. It speaks to us of the, the uh, prophetic word that God has a promise for mankind that he will send a saviour into this world. That in a world of sin and brokenness and everything that goes with that, of living separated from God, God has an answer and he promises the coming. The coming of a Messiah. A coming, the coming of a, a, uh, a Christ who will come into the world and save the world from its sins. Hallelujah. So often in churches we reflect upon the ancient prophecies of the Old Testament. We can go to Isaiah and others and, and we read those. Often we have them as readings during the Christmas season and, and they're amazing to see that. Sometimes we lose the perspective of hundreds of years of God saying something and that period of time where people waited. And they waited with anticipation. Those that anticipated saw it happen. Those that gave up didn't see it happen and they missed the boat. So church, be encouraged to anticipate this morning. But we start the season of anticipation today. This is the first Sunday of Advent. This is, you know, some people say, when should you put your Christmas tree up? Some people say it's on the 12th of December because that's 12 days before Christmas. Some people say the 1st of December. It's the first, it's the first Sunday of Advent. It's a, good, it's a good way to go. And I think last year it was in November and that's okay. You're allowed to put it up in November when the first Sunday of Advent is in November. But we start the season of anticipation today. There is something coming. And as believers in Christ, we are called to anticipate. This anticipation comes from a beautiful word, hope. And it's on the front of your bulletins this morning. We are called to a season of hope. I don't know what it was like for you as a child. I know that I'm a lot younger. Well, maybe not that much younger, but I'm a young, I am younger than many of you in this room in the first service. And that's okay, but... You know, we all have our memories, hopefully, of your own childhoods growing up in your family, of, of being a child at Christmas time. And I know it's probably looked very different in a lot of ways, uh, different uh, ways of, of having traditions and celebrating and that sort of thing. But we all, as children, I believe, at some point had an anticipation at Christmas time. There was something about the Christmas season that we look forward to. And I can only reflect from my own childhood, and I'm going to do that a little bit this morning. So hopefully it's relatable. Maybe it's not. Maybe it'll just be a blessing to you. But whatever it is, I'm going to relate some of those things. But, um, you know, we're, we're often filled with anticipation. As children, it's often the gifts. Let's be honest. You know, the, the children get pretty excited about the presents. It's kind of one of the big things that they, they get excited about. Why? Because they're going to receive something from their parents, from their family, from their loved ones, from... From those, uh, and, and for those of us allowed to, um, sometimes they get a present from Santa, you know, from Santa Claus. And so, you know, we have that as well. As a child, you know, I used to uh, get very excited about Christmas. I lived in a, uh, in a family where we came from the UK. I shared that last Sunday. And, uh, and we had very British kind of traditions around Christmas and that sort of thing. And so I would wake up and, and I love that moment of waking up and realizing it's Christmas. You know, it's Christmas Day, and that excitement that would kind of fill my heart, and it, you know, it's like, it's finally arrived, the big day, Christmas, it's here. I'm going to share three little stories just to whet your appetite of my experience of what it was like, and, and they're kind of, you know, they're, they're interesting. They're, 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 my, uh, they're a little bit naughty, but they're okay. I was a child. And so um, I'm going to share a couple. One of them I remember, I don't know exactly what age I was, but I remember one Christmas, uh, I don't know now if it was my sister or myself, but at three in the morning, waking up, and realizing it was Christmas, but it wasn't time to get up yet. And uh, I, I think it was my sister who came and woke me up. That's my story. I'm sticking with it. I don't exactly remember. And she may watch this and, and disagree, but that's fine. But I think she was the one who came and said, Ben, Ben, it's Christmas. At three in the morning, still dark outside. And it's summertime, so the sun rises, you know, early. 
And uh, I remember us going down to the living room and seeing the tree with all the presents underneath and going, oh, and then we decided to start sorting the presents at three in the morning, sitting down going, this one's for mum, this one's for dad, this one's for you, oh, putting them in piles. And, and I think I even turned the TV on. At that point, I discovered um, Blackhead as Christmas Carol. Those of you who know that, I love that one. It's the, the reverse version of Scrooge where he starts off nice and ends up nasty. <laughs> Anyway, if you want to watch it, it's funny. Um, but anyway, we put that on. And I remember we'd probably been awake for 20 minutes or something doing this. And the door to the lounge opening and my father walking in, go to bed! And the, the oh, oh, yes, so we have to turn the lights off and go back to bed very sheepishly and waiting for the morning. And uh, I don't know if you have stories like that, but maybe you do. Um, another story uh, from another year maybe a year later or whatever, my parents decided that for the first time they were going to put a couple of presents under the tree early, you know, not, not going to wait till Christmas Eve, we'll just put a couple under, you know, and, uh, you know, it was kind of, I think it was a test to see what we would do as children, if we would be okay with that or if, you know, if we'd be tempted and uh, yeah, we were tempted. Um, I remember my sister and I uh, kind of opened the sides of the presents to see what was inside, uh, not just ours, but our parents as well. And... Um, <laughs> And when my uh, parents obviously discovered, we obviously didn't do a very good job because they realised that they'd been tampered with and got into. And uh, again, we were told off rather, you know, yep, not so nicely. And uh, we were told there would be no more presents that year. That was it. We'd lost it. Um, funnily enough, they did get us more presents and we discovered those as well. Um, <laughs> they hit them in the boot of the car that same year. And my sister and I were playing a game in the car. I can't remember what it was. I think we were playing like pet animals or something and we decided to open you know the seat comes down the back seat yeah. into the boot now, this is going to be our little rabbit hutch or whatever it was and we pulled it down oh that's all this in here and we didn't tell them we didn't tell them for many years later that we discovered all the other presents but anyway that was another one third one I'm going to share is a little different uh, when I was getting towards the end of the age and we all know this I'm going through this with my own children at the moment um, my children getting to the age where they don't really want toys anymore you know when you're entering those early teenage years and you know it's like yeah no it's other things now it's music or it's clothing or whatever and that's kind of what teenagers seem to want and uh, I was phasing out of the toys and I was probably on the last year I think it was that I wanted a toy it was a Lego set that I wanted and it was a pirate thing I at the time they had pirate Lego I don't think they do that anymore and uh, anyway, uh, my parents had said to us that, uh, now just letting you know, and I don't know if you've done this yourself, we've said to our kids, you know, we have a budget every year, you know, we save right through the year for our Christmas so we can have a good one, and we put a budget for each child, so just so you know, we've only got so much to spend, also. and my parents did that thing with us, you know, I'll just letting you know, we've spent the same on all of you, so there's no, you know, you don't, don't have any quibbles about what's being spent. Anyway, um, as the gifts were coming out, I noticed that my sister was getting these really flash fancy things and I didn't seem to have anything and I was like what's going on you know it was like a CD some socks a chocolate or something I'm like what's going on she's got like jewellery and you know all this stuff and I actually started to get a bit down and a bit grumpy and I'm feeling like there's no way this is fair you know you get that on the inside you don't want to show it but on the inside as a as a selfish teenager you're kind of thinking these things of there's no way that we've got the same amount and uh, that's it guys that's all the presents and I'm sitting there feeling really glum and not very happy oh, what's this? Behind the couch or whatever it is. And this big box comes out and of course my whole demeanour changed when I realised it was the gift that I wanted and uh, it was probably the expensive gift that I'd been waiting for and that's why I had all these little piddly things over here <laughs> that weren't worth very much. Um, but yeah, so that whole thing of anticipation, the not, not getting it and feeling really down about it and then, oh, it's actually here yeah, and that roller coaster of emotion. And I don't know if you've been on those sort of things, but those are a couple of stories from my childhood growing up in the 80s and the 90s. But anticipation is something that's joyful. It's something that can joyfully fill our hearts. It's different from dread. You know, when something bad is coming, we feel it, we're filled with dread and we don't want to go there. But with anticipation, there is an excitement. There is a drawing to, man, I can't wait for the day to arrive. I can't wait for the event to happen. And that's kind of what we're called to, to fill our hearts with. It's, it's like it can refresh our souls being in a place of anticipation because something good is coming. That's why Advent is such an exciting time. It's an exciting time for us all. We decorate our homes. We've decorated the church this week, and I want to thank the team, Julie and Tiari and, and the, the, the teenagers that came in and helped. Thank you so much for coming to decorate our church. It's beautiful, and you've done an incredible job. So thank you so much. But we do that. We decorate our homes. We make our house you know, look nice. On Friday night, we uh, decorated our home. I go pretty all out. I have lights on the ceiling. You know, where Someone gave me a 
big uh, Santa Claus that came out of a shop in Palmerston North when it closed down or something, and uh, it stays in the garage all year round. And everyone's like, why is there a Santa in your garage? And it comes out one month of the year, and sits in the corner. <laughs> I get my daughter to dust it down with a cloth. Um, we've got, you know, we have these things, and we put lights up and and tinsel and all these sort of things. We decorate. Um, some of us we uh, we play Christmas music. Who's pl- playing Christmas music already? What's wrong with the rest of you? <laughs> Who needs some Christmas music in their life? <laughs> Who needs a Christmas Spotify list? I can hook you up. Look up the festive season on Spotify by Ben Hoyle. It'll bless you. But we listen to Christmas music. We have our carols that we sing in church. You know, I, I'm blessed that I grew up in probably one of the last generations where we studied Christmas at school. I went to Moscow school around the corner here. It wasn't a Christian school, a secular school. And I remember that we learned about Christmas. We learned the Christian Christmas story is what I mean. So we sang the Christmas carols. I sang Silent Night. I sang O Come All Ye Faithful, what we sang this morning. I sang those songs and I was blessed to know them. I go to carols by candlelight now and it's almost like none of the kids know any of those songs. They know the, the secular ones, Jingle Bell Rock, and, and I'm not opposed to those, they're fun, they're cool, but I love the, the, the Christian gospel songs that we have. And I was blessed to be part of that generation where we sang those at school as part of our, our education. You know, we watch Christmas movies. Um, those of you who know me, I have a Christmas movie marathon every year. Um, last, year last night we watched The Grinch, the, the, the new one, the animated one, and, uh, and that sort of thing, and we watched different movies, and and that sort of thing, and you may be the same. <clears throat> we spend time with family and friends over this time. People, as they begin to finish up their break, their, their end of the year break, they're going to travel. You're going to have family come and visit you. You're going to go and visit family. You're going to be all going all over the country and getting together and gathering. It's like the one time of the year that my wife sees all her family at once. You know, it's just one of those things. It's, you know, it's what happens. And, and so we have these beautiful times where we come together. That we purchase gifts that we hope will bless and give joy to the ones that we love. You know, we, we, we go out of our way to get something special to give someone else, to, to bless them and make them feel happy. We start to stock up on food. Sounds like the, the trailblazers are already into it. You know, they've got Thursday night and Friday night, as uh, Chris pointed out. And uh, we're going to start having those foods. I started a diet last week. What was I thinking? I lost four gay G. I'm going to put it all back on. <laughs> We had our first movie and Mr. Costello came around to our house and he brought a big box of favourites. And I was like, oh my word, what am I going to do with that? I had about five. <laughs> and then Mrs. Solit, Mrs. Mrs. Solit drops around a tray of custard squares freshly made yesterday at ours. I'm like, there's no way. I might as well wait till January now. <laughs> I'm going to do my best, but it's going to be real tough. I want to lose some weight, man. Come on. And my mum said to me, what are you doing choosing December to start a diet anyway? <laughs> yeah, I'm mad. Um, you know, but we do that, we start uh, stocking up on food and all the, all the treats that we want in the house, all those sort of things. Sometimes we like to create things. Uh, my daughter loves creating gifts for people rather than buying, you know, she'll make things and make cards and she'll make little uh, ornaments and that sort of thing and we like to do that. We wear funny hats for some reason, um, you know, none here this morning, praise God, we might see some on Christmas Eve. And it's a time of year where we greet strangers in the street with Merry Christmas. You know, it's amazing. You know how around that season you can walk down the town and say Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, someone, and they don't seem to get offended. They just go, Oh, Merry Christmas, thank you very much. And it's a, it's an amazing time. There's something special about that. Um, so, like I said earlier, as a side note, if you want to get the message from Iliafi about the Christmas symbols, I encourage you to see the office afterwards. It'll bless you, um, and it will explain a lot of the stuff. If you perhaps you grew up in a place where all this stuff is perhaps you think it's pagan or that sort of thing, or it has pagan roots, I want to encourage you that there is uh, that isn't the, the true narrative. But uh, I want to encourage you to have that, listen to it, and check it out. So, as believers in the one which in, on which the day is named, Christ, Christmas, Christmas. That's who it's named for. We do all of these physical things that I've talked about. We decorate, we do all these fun things, and, and it's great. But we also anticipate within, within ourselves, within our being. We anticipate physically on the outward, but we also anticipate on the inside. Um, one of my favorite TV shows from the 90s was Home Improvement. Do you remember that one? Tim the Tall Man Taylor? Those of you remember that? And he had a neighbor called Wilson who you never saw his face. You only ever saw his, his eyes. And he'd always, every episode, every single website, he'd go out to see Wilson for a little bit of advice. And Wilson had all these knowledges of all different world cultures and 
philosophers and all these sort of things. And he'd often come out with these little things. And anyway, one day, um, uh, in this one episode, one of the Christmas episodes, Tim goes to his neighbour Wilson across the fence and he's outside doing whatever he is and he looks over the fence, you see his eyes. And Tim says to him, uh, Wilson, I noticed that you don't decorate your house at Christmas time though. And Wilson replies like this, and I thought it was really interesting. He says, well, actually, Tim, I decorate within. I have a tree in my heart, a wreath in my mind, and a star in my soul. And it's symbolic of something. Christmas is a time when we reflect in our own lives of what Christ has done and who Christ is. We, we declare again that he is Messiah. It is that reminder that by hope, God delivered um, on his promise to save humanity. It is through that hope that he delivered on that promise. He sent Christ as a human being. Christ gave up his divinity, he gave up his divine being to come and live as human among us. To live a mortal life, which is a life that has all the trappings of, I believe that Christ stubbed his toe at one point. Why? Because he lived as a human being. Sometimes we think that Christ kind of floated around and the environment didn't affect him. But he did. He was a carpenter. He must have at one point cut his hand doing something, you know, he's working with tools and that sort of thing, but that's the human existence and that's what Jesus wanted he wanted to relate with us and to um, relate with humanity he wanted humanity to relate with God and so he lived a human life so he is fully divine and also fully human, and we know this, we've gone over these scriptures before but reflecting on the fact that God delivered on his promise when we reflect within, it is a practice that stems back through the history of the church. I don't know if you know these facts, but in the 4th and 5th century, um, Advent was a time of preparation for baptism. It was actually a time where Christians put aside time for uh, those who were new believers to get water baptized. And what they would do is they would spend 40 days of prayer and fasting and prepare to, uh, for the celebration that accompanied the baptism of new believers. That's what they did back then. It was only after, only over time that Advent was connected to the coming of Christ. Originally, did you realize this, that Christmas was used to, um, as, as a time to refer to the second coming of Christ. It was actually an expectation and anticipation for Jesus returning. That's where it came. And it wasn't until the Middle Ages that it began to also reflect on the fact that Jesus came the first time. So let's reflect on that as well. And so a little bit of history for you there. But still today... In many Christian communities, the Advent season is seen as a time to reflect upon the arrival of Jesus as a baby and what that moment led to. I've heard it said many times, and you've probably heard it as well, that if it wasn't for Easter, we wouldn't be here. And that's completely true. Christmas is the beginning of that story. It is the beginning of that journey. You can say, well, you couldn't have Easter without Christmas. You've got to have the beginning to go through the process to get to the most important moment in history. Yeah. Of Jesus dying on the cross and being raised again. Christmas marks the beginning of that journey. We can take time to reflect upon the salvation that comes only through Jesus. And I shared that last week in my second service. It is only through Christ that we find salvation. I've got a little quote here. I was going to put it on the screen, but it was one slide and I was like, I'll just read it. <laughs> Amanda Edelman says this. She said, Advent... The Advent season is an invitation to set your mind off of all the stresses of the year. We can take our focus off the crazy hustle that can be associated with the Christmas season that often threatens to produce more hassle than delight. Advent is a chance to focus our thoughts on the gift God has given us in his son. Jesus, who stepped down from heaven and took uh, the form of a man so that we might believe. It is this time where we get to put all that other stuff aside, all the busyness, all the hustle, all the things we're rushing around doing, and take a time to sell up, as we heard from Jack this morning. Take a pause and breathe. That's what sell up means. Take a moment, stop, and breathe. Take in the Spirit of God. Pause. This is a time where we remember what Christ has done. Advent gives us time to reflect upon the freedom from sin through salvation. As Paul wrote us in, this, in the letter that I read this morning, he reminds us in his letter to the church of Galatia, you are no longer a slave, but God's own children. Church, this morning, you need to be reminded that you are God's own children, that you are precious in his eyes, that you are his and he is yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
That is what Christmas is all about. Brothers and sisters, let us reflect upon God's great love that you are able to be called his children. Amen. Amen. Christmas is an invitation for us to reflect upon our own stories in God. Remember that time when you were first saved? Yeah. When you were set, for, uh, set uh, free from slavery of sin? Do you remember what it was like? Yeah. I see those hands raised. There is, a, there is something powerful about that where we come to the, the gratitude in our own hearts to say, God, I am so blessed that you sent your son. Amen. To know that he loved me so much that he came to be a human being and live among us. To live like us, that blows my mind. Many of us know what it looked like to be slaves to things like habits, to selfishness, to addictions, to abuse, to anger and lust. And the list goes on and on and on. And we know what we struggle with. We have stories of God's great mercy and His great grace. Hallelujah. Stories of our overcoming of those things through Christ. Each of us would, hopefully. Walking a new life. Life more abundant. More, more abundant than we could ever dream or think. God's greatest Christmas gift to us is His Son, Jesus, who came to earth as a human being, giving up the divine privileges of glory to live among us, be betrayed, tortured, hung on a cross, because that's what we deserve. Only to rise victoriously yes. over death and sin and create a path to restore intimacy with our Lord, our loving Heavenly Father. That's what Jesus' coming means. When you are filled with that joy, you are ready to bless other people Amen. with what God has given you to share. And that's what hopefully Christmas is about. When you give a gift, it's not just giving a gift. It's not... It's not fulfilling a commercial purpose of buying a gift off a shop. Please don't think that way. I know that it's what the way the world wants to think. And some Christians have bought into that. Oh, I don't buy gifts because I'm not buying into the consumer spirit. How about we just buy into the spirit of loving one another and give gifts out of love? Because we actually care for someone. We want to bless them. It's actually just give, still giving a gift, but it's having a different motive. Yeah. We've got to come back to the purpose of why gifts were given in the first place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hope is the starting point of Advent. So let our hearts be filled with hope. For the prophecies of the First Testament, the Old Testament, heralded the Messiah, the beginning of that hope, to arrive to the arrival of God's promised Jesus Himself, to the hope of salvation through Christ that each of us has hopefully accepted this morning. And if you haven't, I want to create space for you to do that this morning. Because what a wonderful way to start the Advent season, yeah, yeah. but by giving your life to Jesus. Yeah. Give your gift to God that he most, most wants. Yeah. Hallelujah. Paul wrote in, our morning, in the scripture this morning, God sent him to buy freedom for us yeah. who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his children. Yeah. God's desire is that you become one of his children yeah. because he loves you. He wants his best for you. God. He wants you to trust him with your life. Yeah. So he can show you life and life more abundantly. Amen. Hallelujah. So, I am going to close up here. We need to finish a little bit early because we've got to prepare the pool for the baptisms and the second service. But I want to finish with a couple of things. First of all, if you're here this morning or perhaps you're watching on live stream and you haven't received the hope of Christ yet. You haven't received this hope that I've been talking about this morning. You haven't decided to... Surrender your sinful nature, your selfishness, your, your lust, your abuse, your anger, all the things that are, you know has been part of your story. If you haven't done, yet done that and you want to give it to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry for the life I have lived. I want to live your way and I want to accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. I want to create space for you this morning. I want to invite you to begin the Advent season with a new life in Christ. I would love for you in this moment to just pop your hand up just so I can acknowledge you and pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So good. Let's pray this prayer together. And if that's you, I want you to make this your own declaration. But as a church, let's pray this together and encourage those that have responded. Let's pray. Just, just uh, follow after me. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. 
I respond to you this morning. Because I believe in you. I know that I have lived without you. I know that I have done things that are wrong in your eyes. And this morning I ask for your forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus, that you gave up heaven for me to come as a child, grow up. Then took my punishment on the cross for me. Thank you that you rose back to life. That I can be restored to my heavenly father. Thank you, Jesus, that you give me new life. I want to live for you. I want to learn your plans for my life. Help me, Jesus, to live in victory. Help me, Jesus, to live in victory. Amen. Amen. If that was the first time you've made that prayer, I'd encourage you to come see one of the pastors, Pastor Chris, Gary Joyce down here, um, any other pastors that are here. Come and see us, and we'd love to um, just ch ch uh, chat to you, perhaps give you a Bible if you haven't got one. If you're watching online and you responded to that as well, I want to encourage you to reach out to us. Um, you can send us an email to the church office or um, message us on Facebook. We'd love to hear from you, and if we can help in any way, we'd love to. But as we are, if you are here this morning, and uh, or, at, or you are watching online, and you're heading into December, perhaps a little bit hopeless, you haven't really taken that moment to breathe Salah and take in the moment, remembering who Christ is and what He's done. Perhaps you don't feel hopeful about much at the moment. Maybe there's just not a lot going on. Perhaps you've been so busy with work and family and life in general, that you haven't been able to find peace as we enter this Christmas time this year. I want to create this moment now for any of you who want to respond to the, any of the messages this morning. We have great hope in Jesus, church. Amen. We have great hope. And that hope is a free gift. Yeah. It's a free gift from Him to you this morning. Thank you, Father. And as we enter this festive season... I, I just want us to all as a whole church walk into the season with hope in our hearts Amen. because it is a joyous time it is a wonderful time and if you are under hopelessness if you are under um, just a depression or a, a burden because of this time of year maybe it's a hard time financially for you I know that for some people it is um, we want to pray because we don't want it to be caught up around all that sort of stuff. We don't want you to be so worried about, you know, how am I going to do this and how am I going to do that? I want you just to be filled with the peace and the hope of Christ this morning. So why don't we all stand together? And if that's you, I want you to make your own prayer as I pray. I want you to take an opportunity to relate to your Heavenly Father, who I said loves you. He wants you to be filled with His hope this morning. Hallelujah. Let me pray for us. Gracious Father, we are so grateful this morning. Thank you for the hope that we have in your son, Jesus. Thank you for the hope that we return to this Christmas, Father, that may just fill our hearts with your joy, Lord. And may we be a blessing to those that you have placed in our lives as we are filled with that hope, Father, that we might be carriers of your message at this festive time. Lord, we love you, and we commit this month to you, Father, that we would indeed be lights in our community, lights of the love of God, lights of the hope of God, lights of the truth of God. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. In your wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Go and have a cup of tea, something to eat, and uh, the baptism team can come set up. Thank you.